But the sophisticated parents, not only do they get on the internet, they, they start talking to other parents and they find parents in their community who have gone through this and, and they, they, they're teaching themselves. We got in touch with um, another parent whose child had been through the same operation and um, she gave us just incredibly good advice about the nuts and bolts of getting through, um, the, the nuts and bolts of the hospital stay. One of the most powerful uh, components of the system are other families and getting in touch with other families, particularly early on. You may not need it for many years. It's not something you're going to need all of, the, all of your life. But in the beginning, to have another parent to call and say, you know, I'm having trouble with this feeding device. And, uh, you know, how did you do it? Or my husband seems like he's kind of depressed about what's happened. Did that happen in your household? Or one of a million other questions that the doctors won't necessarily anticipate you'd have. You know, you've almost, it's a way of finding some allies. The initial operation that the child has will determine how the child looks and how, in the case of cleft palate, how the mouth will function for the rest of their lives. And it is worth making the effort to find a center where they feel comfortable, where they're able to evaluate the results that these surgeons can obtain, um, and where they can get the best information and the best care available. We were visiting one of the teams uh, that we had heard a lot about uh, the surgeon, and we, while we were in uh, having a consultation with him, he brought in uh, one of his patients uh, and it was a little boy about four years old. And he looked great. He looked wonderful. It was what I dreamt could be done for Sage. Families should look until they find a place that they feel nourished at and feel that they're getting quality care. And then they should hang in. They shouldn't move around if they can help it. Um, I, I've seen so many of the families that have shopped, constantly shopped, for this one and that one, and they switch teams, and they go from one place to the other, or they're mobile, and they're moving around the country, and the kid's been to six different teams, and the outcome is never what it could be if they hang in with a good center that they trust, and they work together on a plan, and then they follow through on that plan. Almost always there's a better outcome. Well, surgeons have different approaches as to how to repair a cleft lip or a cleft palate. That's why you want to look at the before and after to see whether their technique results in a good result. Now, if it's a technique that is not the usual technique, that's when you may want to ask, well, where have you published this? Uh, because you're different. Now, there are one or two people that say, oh, let's do it in the first week. and. Um, I would consider that to be a red flag. And actually operating very early in life doesn't usually get as good a result as waiting until the baby's stabili stabilized and is thriving and has weight gain and the parents are functioning well as a system and they're ready for a hospitalization and a surgical procedure. And it's not an emergency. We know how to take care of those babies. We know how to feed them. We know how to make them thrive. We know that they'll do just fine for the most part. So, you know, I've always felt a little uncomfortable with that. Let's rush out and fix it up now so that we don't have to really deal with who this child is. I understand in retrospect why the medical professionals view cleft lip the way they do. It is a repairable defect. The children do look fine when it's all, when it's all over. I just think if if I could have known that it would be a difficult road, but it would all come out um, well and we'd have this beautiful girl, it would have helped a lot. In the end, I think most parents look back and say, wow, we made it. It was a rough road, but we made it. And you, like all the other parents, can just sort of sit back and enjoy your child, enjoy your happy baby, and um, put, it, put it all behind you. 
I guess I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. These kids do great. As a group, they grow up to be productive adults, happy students, um, you know, parents someday. I think the thing that's the nicest moment for any parent who has a child with a cleft lip or cleft lip and palate is the first time she smiled at somebody and someone said, she has a great smile. <laughs>